Changing the conversation now, Nigeria's gross domestic product outlook has remained positive in the last quarter of the year 2019, despite the closure of neighboring land borders. While local manufacturers are consequently reporting major boosts to their revenue and profits, there are a lot of improvements in domestic production of most targeted items. However, as the GDP looks promising with positive outlook, it remains weak, a situation experts and analysts are very much concerned about. Well, joining us now is Ayo Adedeji, a public analyst, management consultant, fellow of ICANN and fellow of CITN, as well as a certified project manager. Thank you for coming on the show, Mr. Adedeji. Adesua, thank you so much. Quite, quite the profile you have. Yes. Um, let's, let's begin. I mean, you saw the figures. Is this commendable? What is, what is um, responsible for this growth? Um, the current figure that is being referred to, good morning. The current figure that we are referring to right now mm -hmm. is the 2.28% um, growth, yes. which is for quarter three. Mm. Um, the truth is that for anything within our space, national space, wants to see anything positive, uh, we should celebrate it, mm -hmm. um, we should commend it. Um, there are quite a lot of efforts and things that have been analyzed that are responsible for this. Uh, we talk about favorable oil production, which is at 2.04 million currently, and then even the price of oil is favorable. Uh, we're talking about also a little effect from the closure of the border mm -hmm. that is affecting a lot of things in terms of production locally. Uh, because once, once we talk about our GDP, which is our gross domestic product, we're talking about the monetary value of anything that we produce within this particular space, whether produced by Nigerian or foreigner. Uh, so it is, it is commendable. Yeah, the truth also is what you have talked about. It is commendable, but it is weak. Mm -hmm. Weak in terms of um, carrying the oil idea of the direction of the country, in terms of the economy. Uh, because as we talk about this particular figure, we also need to balance it together with what is happening to every human being, mm -hmm. every Nigerian on the street right now. Uh, so when we draw figures about what is happening in terms of budget, in terms of GDP, uh, Nigerians really want to ask, what is the effect of these figures on me? All right, uh, as we go to break, let me just quickly ask you this. This figures, this 2.8% growth, vis-a-vis -vis a population growth of 3%. Mm. So the country is obviously becoming poorer because any giant strike you make, population is definitely going to eclipse it. And you know, when you look at population growth and GDP growth, it's just like blood pressure, mm. systolic and diastolic. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that. And okay. I'll work by Ripa, so mm. after this quick commercial break, That's fine. we'll come back and talk about that even more. All right, welcome back to the Morning Show here on Rise News. We've got uh, public affairs analyst and management consultant, Ayo Arizeji. So I was talking about, you know, you said great science, 2.28%, visa vis a population growth of about 3%. Yeah, I kind of agree because, with that. Because video. obviously it makes the country poor. When you throw up the figure of your gross domestic product, we normally say that the G GDP per capita now becomes very important. Mm. That means when you place this your GDP, can you place, place your population beside it? When 100 persons are raising 10,000, really might not make sense if 50 persons are raising 7,000 because it's better in terms of production. So we want to look at the population. And once the growth of your population is higher than your GDP, you are still worse off. In technical terms, you are still very poor. And this is our state right now. What we desire for Nigeria, which we'll hope will happen, when we talk about our GDP question, you talk about what consumers can spend, you talk about what government is spending, you talk about your balance of trade, and you talk about investments. And when you can look at this equation continually as a country and talk about aspects that we need to improve upon, our exports and all the noise that we make about agriculture is still not yielding too much. Even the current figure that we have, agri contributes less than 30% to our GDP. We make a whole lot of noise even about oil. And Nigerians need to put it in perspective that the whole of the national GDP, oil contributes less than 10%. And areas that we need to improve upon, I need to say this, there is no way we push all these our narrative of arguments at GDP that is not connected to employment, that is not connected to people that are working. Currently, right now, we still have about a quarter of our population that are not contributing anything mm. to what we're doing. As much as we're pushing employment, they now begin to push education also, to talk about the quality of the people that we have. It's, it's, it's painful that we have Nigerians that are not contributing like practically anything to this particular GDP and the growth. Because when we talk about our 
uh, our, our GDP, our expenditure, our ability to spend, what we produce, what we earn, everything comes into the question of our GDP. And then we have a lot of our people that are unemployed. So as a government, what do we need to do? There needs to be a very concise and, and, and focused strategy on unemployment. How do we drive it down? And that also lean on to education. And as a government, we need to be particular about that. Once we don't improve all of this particular area, it is very, very difficult to improve technically on our GDP. I mean, we have spoken, I think it's, it's a re recurrent uh, conversation when we talk about diversifying oil, because we are very reliant on gas and oil in, you know, in Nigeria. And we, even during the break, we we're talking about, in the, in, you know, we, had for, we have 46 uh, sectors as it stands. Do you think that we should be looking at uh, the quality of the these 46 sectors, or should we be introducing other sectors? Like you even mentioned ICT, we don't, you know, it's almost non-existent at this point. What is your opinion about Chita, this? It has to be both. What we have currently, we have to grow it. What we don't have, we have to bring to the equation. We're talking about it like you said, you said during the break. Mm -hmm. um, it is shocking that a country like Nigeria we're not embracing ICT to the extent to which we should embrace it. Just like normally talk about it, there is unemployment, there is underemployment. People can still be employed and they are not working to their potential. And for us in so many areas, including agriculture that will make a lot of noise about, thank God mining and querying and everything like that is picking up in terms of figure. Even agriculture that will make a whole lot of noise about, we're not doing so much in the value chain of agriculture. For example, in terms of turning agri into finished product, the agri product into finished product, whether it is egg, there is actually technically no company in Nigeria that still produces egg powder. Companies in Nigeria that still use egg powder to produce Produce a number of things that they produce still have to import egg powder. With the much of we, things that we do we, in we, terms of poultry, we, we still don't have. We we have the largest uh, producers of cassava, and we import starch. It is it is it is ridiculous. We import and starch. these are the areas where, as a government, we need to focus on. Nobody should give. Um, we we I understand that to talk about government when you're outside is different from when you are inside. Mm. And for everybody that is saddled with responsibility of leadership, I, I'm with you because there's a whole lot of burden. But this is our country we're talking about, mm. and we want Nigeria to move forward. So it is it is we will not be so soft on anybody, whether you're a local government chairman, whether you're the governor, whether the president, where you're inside the economic team and you're the minister, we need to make this economy to work. Mm. The living standard of Nigerians need to improve. Um, we have seen things well outside of Nigeria. And to actually push a country forward and push an economy forward, I don't think it's rocket science. But there's a need to sit down, not to be too relaxed with what we're getting from oil and what we're getting from gas. To think critically, ICT, how do we turn it around to make sure that our people are productive? Our, 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 our education itself, how do we turn it around? Do you know how much money goes out in from this country based on education, mm. based on health? And, and we're hours away from knowing the outcomes of the MPC uh, last meeting for the year. Mm. Um, I mean, a lot of people say, analysts expect that it to be maintained, key rates to be maintained. But what's your take so far? Because you, you mentioned monetary policies earlier. What's your take on the monetary policy direction so far by uh, Mr. Mierfeli? Uh, there are those who argue that there's too much fiscal intervention by the CBN. Yeah, for sure. Um, my perspective on CBN right now is that um, as much as one would like to criticize them, the factors affecting their direction in terms of um, uh, fiscal and monetary policy is so, so, so tight. Um, my major concern for our CBN is independence. I do not think that truly according to what the law says that our CBN should be independent, I do not think that they are. Um, the governor of CBN has actually tried um, to stem the tide. Uh, you and I were here towards the end of 2015 and 2016 and the volatility that we have experienced. Uh, so in technical terms, what they have put in place is is working to a bit, uh, but that's just to a bit. So CBN, as I say, it is currently on maintenance mode and do not have the capacity to aggressively propel us into economic growth and expansion. Um, for example, for all that we have done in the last two years, there has not been really any meaningful impact on our exchange rate, which mm -hmm. directly affects a lot of things uh, on Nigerians, have affected a lot of things and the cost of things around us. Uh, so we are actually on maintenance mode as far as, as far as so many things are concerned, and we are not technically bold in taking certain steps. Let's talk about the call down for devaluation on the precipice of the fact that external reserves started to hit the 40 billion mark. Mm. Scary times. Mm -hmm. What's your take on this? Um, Rafa, are you sure that we are 40 billion? Or less. Uh, the figure is far, far more less than that. Yeah, it's, it's beginning to creep out of that 40 billion mark down. Mm. That would. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's much less than that. Can I take your question again? You are yeah. talking about standards with yeah. respect to. 
with respect to devaluation, the cost for devaluation now, as regards external reserves, you know, devaluation, MFL did say, oh yeah, our devalue when it reaches a certain threshold. We are not there yet. And this, this is not the first time that CBN governors um, sitting world talking about devaluation. Um, our professor Soludo talked so much about devaluation and all of that. There are benefits of devaluation um, so, with so many respects. Uh, but also, uh, maybe technically for us as, as, as a country, uh, we're just averse to that. As a person, as, an econo as someone that is a public analyst, um, in terms of production and in terms of balance of trade, I will push much more than devaluation. I feel devaluation is a little bit cosmetic in so many respects, and it's just a managed perspective. So I would rather push for what will make the economy to be much more stable in terms of our GDP. What is our balance of trade? What we produce, what do we Currently, export? Currently, balance of trade is not good. It's not good. It's not so, looking good. Of course. Because it's, it's not just looking good anytime soon. For it to look good, your export needs to be good. Yeah. Your export needs to be good. Uh, so currently, you want to ask a very simple question. What is it that, as a, as a people, as a nation, they are exporting in order to earn money? And then we cannot see much of that. Uh, if you are looking for import, to, uh, for import, you have it all over the place. But we're talking in terms of export, what we're doing in order to generate money. You have of that. So I would rather push for balance of trade. I would rather push for this particular government and for us to look and say, as a people, what is it that we can produce? and push out in order to earn money. And then to be able to balance that and reduce what we import. As we are closing the border and all of that, that is mm. fine. But as a people, we need to think what we're exporting has to be more than yam. Mm. What we're exporting has to be more than other regular things. We don't and export television. You see, Malaysia, the reason why Malaysia went off the chart, you know, as regards economic growth, despite the fact that they had agricultural products too, was because Malaysia is exporting television, they're exporting cars, they're exporting the like. You're, 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 you're talking about people that push energy into research. Mm -hmm. You're talking about people that push energy into education. You're talking about, talking about people that push energy into technology. As a people, we are too comfortable. And that's why so many things, things are going down the drain. Don't forget the fact that our budget hangs on our head. And it hangs with a lot of debt and debt. 2017, 2018, 2016, 2019, we're boring and we're boring. Mm. Critically, we must think okay. on what we need to improve upon in terms of production. And we must push energy into but it. A lot of people argue with you as we wrap up that we have a decent debt to, seven, uh, with debt to GDP ratio. That is just only one factor. And there are those who say that as long as we have this double digit inflation rates, uh, we are not going to see any meaningful growth rates as regards the GDP figures. All, all, all of but this in terms of, go. okay, all right. But we have fine. to go. Thank this you so much, fine. Mr. Adedeji, for all coming right. on the show all right, today. Thank you. And I'm Rick Zuss. To the end of the show today, I am Ade Sua Omoran. I'm Rafa Yuseni. And I'm Sheito Atigari. Thank you for watching. From our entire team here in Lagos, enjoy the rest of your morning and, of course, the rest of your day. Goodbye.